Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about what you might want to have on your pie in case of an emergency. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so what I wanted to do today was kind of go over some of the things that I keep on my Raspberry Pi that might be useful during an emergency. And I'm hoping to start a conversation here, so if you see something that I've left off the list, please leave it down in the comments below. But this could be an emergency of uh, any magnitude of size. It might be as simple as, well, I got to reset my HT to a factory default because something's going goofy with it. Uh, and then I need to reprogram that HT while I'm in the field. Maybe uh, I'm out in the Jeep and I'm in the middle of nowhere and I have no cell phone service and I need to get a message back to uh, my wife or to one of my friends uh, from a remote location. Maybe I broke my cell phone. Maybe I dropped it in the water and uh, it's no longer functioning. So let's kind of go over a few of those things that I think you might want to have on your Raspberry Pi. So the first thing here, uh, maybe not so much for an emergency, is I do keep a copy of my ham license in the My Documents folder on my Raspberry Pi. Now, I've got to admit, no one has ever asked me to see that document, but it's always there just in case. A contact list. Now, this contact list could be a multitude of different things. Uh, maybe you want a list of your club members or your Aries members uh, and contact information uh, for those guys in case you were supporting some sort of local event. Maybe it's a bike race. Uh, maybe it's coverage, uh, you know, communications that's needed after a tornado or a hurricane or something like that. But uh, just a list of other radio operators that you might need to get in touch with after some sort of uh, disaster or maybe uh, while you're trying to support some event. Uh, you also want to have uh, a contact list of friends and family members. Again, like I mentioned earlier, maybe I'm out somewhere, I've damaged or lost or uh, for whatever reason cannot utilize my cell phone to look up contact information. Having a copy of that on the Pi could come in handy. Now, while we're talking about that contact list of friends and family, something else you probably want to include that you may not have in your contact list right now is what mobile provider they uh, they currently use so for instance i'm a verizon customer and you would want to know that because if we know that information we can actually use winlink to deliver a text message to their phone i think i've done a video on that in the past if i can run that down i'll leave a link to that uh, down in the description below some other documents that you might want to have with you uh, is the user manuals for anything uh, that might be critical gear in the field. So maybe you want to keep a user manual for your HT, maybe for your HF radio, maybe for your mobile radio. All of those user manuals I try to keep on the Raspberry Pi. That way if I run into something in the field that uh, I'm not familiar with or I've forgotten how to do, I can grab a copy of the user manual that's on my Pi and look up the information that I need. Radio images. Now, what I mean by radio images is if you use an application like Chirp to program your radios, you can actually store all of that information in what Chirp calls an image file. Then, uh, like I talked about earlier, if uh, you maybe needed to reset a radio to factory default, you could grab your radio image and quickly load all of your information back onto the radio using Chirp. So I tend to keep uh, radio images. I can't for some of my radios, but any radio that I can program with Chirp, I do keep those radio images on my Raspberry Pi. Doesn't take up a lot of room and it's just handy if you need it. 
I also maintain a list of local repeaters. So I might not have everything in my radio or maybe I'm visiting uh, with another group that's uh, 30, 40 miles away. I do keep a list of uh, pretty much all of Middle Tennessee's repeaters in a document. I just find it's helpful in case I can't get the repeater book app on my phone to load up. Uh, maybe because I'm out of cell phone range. So there's something else that you might want to have available in the field. Some other reference documents that I like to keep on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I keep some cheat sheets and some diagrams, maybe for a 49 to 1 in-fed half-wave antenna. Uh, I've got a document in my, uh, in my folder on the Pi that tells me how to wrap the core if I needed to. So uh, that's, that's another document that you might want to have. Also keep a cheat sheet in there for dipole links. So if I needed to uh, construct a dipole in the field, I've got a reference chart there that will at least give me a starting point for those antenna lengths. I've also done some testing uh, with my radio and the uh, Raspberry Pi to see what the current draw is when I'm using the radio in a particular way. So let's say I'm running JSA call and I'm running it at uh, five watts output with the 891. Well, I did a test of that uh, in the shack one day and I recorded how much current it's going to draw off of the battery in that particular case. And then I did that uh, for various different power levels. So, and I think I ran my digital stuff all the way up to 50 watts just to see what the power draw is off of the battery. But if you're in the field and you're running off of battery, uh, that might be some helpful information to know how long you can extend the life of that battery, uh, maybe by lowering the power output of your radio from 20 watts down to 10 watts or maybe even 5 watts. I also keep my radio bag checklist on the Raspberry Pi so I can open up that document if I'm getting ready to head out and verify that I've got everything in my go bag uh, for communications that I would need. Just a quick and handy thing that I like to keep a copy of on the Pi. Now, if you're involved with your local ARIES groups, uh, there might be some other things that you would want specific to being an ARIES member. Uh, maybe you want to have the National Interoperability Field Guide with you. Uh, there's also an ARIES manual that's available in PDF format that uh, you might want to keep on the Pi. And you might also consider downloading all of the ICS forms in a fillable PDF format. That might come in handy for you as well in the field. Now something else I've included on my Pi is the VNC viewer installation files. So I'm already running the web server on the Pi with the emergency email server. So since the web server is already active, I created a folder on the web server and dropped all of uh, those installation files in there. So I've got one for Windows, for Mac, uh, for Linux, for the Raspberry Pi, and also for Android. You can't do this with an iPhone because the iPhone will not allow you to do something called sideloading apps. Uh, so Apple kind of locks that down so you have to download things direct from the App Store. But all of the other platforms, I've got uh, the installation file for VNC Viewer there on the server. So if the hotspot's running on the Pi, you can connect to the hotspot navigate using your browser to a specific folder uh, on the Raspberry Pi, and there you can see all of the files that are available to install. So I can click on one of those. Let's say uh, I might need to use somebody's Windows laptop to access my Raspberry Pi, maybe because my tablet is dead and I don't have the cable to recharge it. Uh, so I could grab a Windows laptop, connect to the Pi's hotspot, navigate to that web address on the Raspberry Pi, and then go ahead and install the VNC viewer. That way, if they didn't have VNC viewer installed before this event, I could still use that device to access my Raspberry Pi. All right, guys, well, there's kind of uh, my starter list for you, something to think about. Again, if you see something that I have missed on this list, please put it down in the comments below and uh, maybe I will add that to my Raspberry Pi going forward. 
We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3. Today, let's talk about what you might want to keep on your pie in case of an emergency.